There we go. Hope you're all good. I am back from having COVID. I'm just about recovered, um, but we're a bit behind on videos. So I'm kind of videoing what I'm doing at the moment. And today's an exciting day. This here, this is my 2014 MacBook Pro. This has had a long, hard life and it's RAM and graphics card are now dead. So it randomly turns off. It also uses old USB ports. I'm not sure if you can see that. And it's generally a bit of an old dinosaur. Now my lovely DPD guys just turned up. He turned up with a MacBook Pro 13 inch. It's the M1 version. It is not the Mac I wanted, but I can't get a fully spec'd out MacBook Pro at the moment. So I've bought a refurb one to sort of tide me over because I'm literally without a laptop right now. And I'm working between a M1 Mac mini and a, what are they called, iPad. That's my two machines I've got for work at the moment. So very much need a laptop. 13 inch was the best I could muster up on short notice. So we're gonna go and resort my tether station back here. And I'm gonna go through exactly what's in my tether station, why it's there, how we tether, how we manage the files, all that sort of good stuff. Now my tether table itself is a rock and roller cart. And that's because we can then pack it down, take it on location to different studios. And it's all nice and easy. We're tethering into the Mac mini normally um, because the MacBook Pro has been dead, but that's meant unplugging it and taking it back and forth between the office and here. And that's, that's not a good, a good use of my time. So we're replacing it with the MacBook Pro 13 inch. There's gonna be a whole world of dongles and all the rest of it, but we're gonna do the best we can because this has got to last me apparently until April, which is when I can next get a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Um, and it'll be a MacBook Pro Max, I think, probably fully spec'd out. Um, to actually be my long-term working machine, because with the MacBooks, they do last a long time. My last one was in 2014. It was working up until two weeks ago, and now it's definitely not working, but I'm happy spending that amount of money for that cost per use. So let's dive in, let's have a look at what we got, and then get it all set up. Hey Siri. So for the most part, we're set up. I'm just downloading all the apps that I need. I'm also migrating my Backblaze. So my previous MacBook Pro had a Backblaze account to it. I'm now telling Backblaze that the new MacBook Pro is that account. So it will continue with the current system I've got running. Now this is a bit of a botched job because I can't get hold of a proper computer, but spec wise is actually absolutely fine for what I do. We're just lacking in ports. It only has two USB-C ports. So we've set up a dongle to it and that's allowing me to have my backup drive running, my monitor running, and it also charges through that dongle. And then the second USB-C drive, that's for my tethering. And I'm using one of these really fancy tether cables. I cannot give out the details of where they come from for my one, but you can buy the exact same one from LSD, LSG Digitech. Um, they come in red, but it is actually the same cable just that I knew someone who knew someone and I got them in orange. Um, but there we go, so tether tools officially out of the cable world for me. I'm on these new ones, which are much better. Still using the tether tools jerk stopper and the tether tools plate. Um, although the LSG Digi guys, they also make their own plate, which does look better, but I can't justify buying it because my current one works fine. It's just that their one is better. So tether setup, pretty much good to go. I've kind of tidied all the cables way underneath it to make it as neat as possible. Then down one side, I've got my flash meter. That's my doorbell. Okay. 
some very cool lighting in here today. Um, but there we go, so we're mostly there. I need to do a bit of tidying up on it and then we're gonna show you the actual tether process once I've got everything installed. Pretty pleased with the MacBook so far. I've not really put it through its paces, but I'm gonna be editing this video later tonight on it when I'm at home, just to see whether I can actually edit 6K raw video footage on such a tiny machine uh, in an easy way. So there we go, this is my tether setup. Now, down the side of it, we've got loads of these um, pockets and in there we've got one pocket for hard drives because sometimes we need to have a hard drive courier to a retouch or whatever it may be. Then we've got a pocket for the remotes and that's a remote for the, the music, the humidifier, the air conditioning, all those things, all the remotes live in one pocket. We have a pocket for cables, all these sorts of little bits and pieces, it's all very neatly organized. So whoever's there on the day can see what they've got and work their way around it. We've then got all the gaff tape attached to it just because the tether trolley is normally near where the action is. Um, less so during COVID, we've been like, extension cables going away from them, but generally speaking, it's pretty close. So all that tape's on there. There's also a second load of tape on the assisting trolley and there's tape on everybody anyway, but it's good to have a good selection of colored tapes there. They can also use it to label drives because when we're doing a big production, we'll buy brand new drives for the shoot and we'll label them as we go. Um, and you know, post addresses, career addresses, whatever it may be. So that's all of that there sorted. There's one last thing I want to show you, which is something you can all do and start now and that is a cable bag. Let me quickly show you mine. Now, if you do a quick Amazon search, you'll find one of these. It's like a 10 pound cable bag, uh, and this stores everything I might need. So in here, we've got backup sort of uh, tether cables, a charging thing, a USB adapter, HDMI cable, all of the basic sort of stuff which won't fit in the small side. And this I take to studios with me when I'm shooting elsewhere, because often we'll shoot in London for studio work, I take this with me. And then it's got all the different USB cables, my Apple pen charger, a USB-C to USB adapter, pretty much every type of cable you could need, just in case we're caught short. And this lives on the tether trolley as well. So this will be there. I'm sure it's like 10 pound or 14 pound. I accidentally painted mine blue, just here. Um, but it still does the job. So I'm gonna crack on, finish the setup of the computer, and then I'm gonna talk you through my tethering. So we're all set up now, we're good to go. I've got my camera, which is over here, there it is. That's set up into my computer, so quick, Command K. There we go, that's firing nicely. Instantly into Capture One, onto the hard drive. So my tether workflow is we set up a session on the hard drive, and that's the internal hard drive to the computer we're using. So that's the least likely to corrupt, and it will give the best performance. Once it's shot onto that hard drive, we have two instant backups. One is called Backblaze, which I'm just inheriting a previous license onto this. And the other is called Chronosync. And that will automatically create a duplication every time a new file is created onto this G drive. I have loads of these that are four terabyte G drives. We use them here. And then they end up just being like a, a fail safe should things go wrong. At the end of the shoot, we make a second copy to an SSD and that goes into the office to be ingested into the main machine, at which point we can wipe this laptop because we've already got the backup here and then we've got the backup on the main ingestion system. Now the whole process is a bit more complex than that, but that's the, the nuts and bolts of it, if you will. So we're pretty good to go now. I'm happy with this setup. I think the best thing to do at this point is give it a quick go on the edit, see how it works out, see whether I can do the work I need to do. It is limiting not having that extra SSD card. It'd be great to have the SSD for the main ingestion in the office auto backing up as we go along, but you know, copying a sheet of what, 100 gig at the end of the day, SSD to SSD is a couple of minutes. It's not the end of the world. It'd be nice, but I can live with that and having to make that compromise of having the, the cheaper laptop for now, because it's all that was available, is better than no laptop or continually bringing my main computer in and out of the office, which was an absolute pain in the arse especially for these videos and the Patreon videos and the workshops, because I'm often running a screen recording at the same time and it, it wasn't happy doing that. I, I pretty much melted the computer. So, setup's all good to go. Job for the day is done. I'm now back into my office and working on some pre-production for some clients. Hope you enjoy this video. See you soon. Bye-bye.